God is good all the time. On this fourth Sunday of Lent, thank you for worshiping at Monumental United Methodist Church in Old Town, Portsmouth. My name is Celeste Teeth, and I am the pastor at Monumental. If you are worshiping on Facebook, let us know you're here by clicking the like button or leaving a comment below. Through your giving, Monumental is able to continue ministry in the community and around the world. Our giving enables Monumental to support making disciples and assisting those in need. If you would like to give to this ministry that we share, you can give through our website, through your online banking bill pay option, or through the mail. If you would like to assist the people of Ukraine through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, you may send a check with Ukraine in the memo. Thank you, as always, for your generosity. Our worship would not be possible today without the assistance and participation of our worship team. Reverend Ellen Comstock is our liturgist, Annette Crandall is our musician, Ray Comstock is our video and audio producer, and Art Morgan puts it all together so that you may worship online with us. Thank you to all who are part of this worship design team. Our Lenten study continues Sunday evening at 7 p.m. We're studying the book, Words of Life, Jesus and the Promise of the Ten Commandments today. And we are meeting on Zoom on Sundays at 7 p.m. Our noonday concert for March will be Monday, March the 28th, featuring Arthur Morgan and Al Crandall with their brass instruments. Chi Wolbrink will be their accompanist. Wendy Roan and Chris Kushno will be guest musicians, and Ann Morgan will narrate the program. We look forward to this concert and hope that many of you will come. If you are spring cleaning and discover that you would like to share some of your new or gently used items, you can donate them to Monumental for the attic sale, which will be held on August the 20th. Monumental will have a Monday Thursday service on April 14th at 7 p.m. If you would like to place an Easter lily in the church on Easter Sunday, the deadline for orders is April the 10th. The li lilies are $12 a piece and may, give it, may be given in honor or memory of a loved one. You may also make a donation to the Altar Guild. An updated church directi directory is available now. Contact the church office or pick up one at the check-in table. From the Gospel of Luke, we hear the parable of the fig tree that does not produce fruit. The fig tree is given a year reprieve and will receive extra feeding to encourage it to produce figs. Will it produce and thrive and be fruitful? Will we? Let us pre prepare our hearts and minds for worship and receive the blessings of our loving and merciful God.
you join me in our call to worship? O oh God, my God, we seek you. Our souls thirst for you. Our spirits long for you. For we are parched and weary in these desert times, these wilderness places. But your love, O oh God, is better even than life. Our words will praise you, our actions bless you. Let us seek the Lord where God may be found. Call upon the Holy One who is near. We will bless you as long as we live. We will lift up our hands and call on your name. Let us sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, in the hymnal 127, if you have a hymnal at home. together. Holy God, we confess that we have grown complacent in our response to you. You set before us a rich feast of blessing, but we are drawn to lesser things that cannot satisfy. You call us to attend to urgent needs in the world, but we indulge our own desires. Our ways are not your ways. Our thoughts are not your thoughts. Forgive us when we fall short of your claim upon our lives. Disturb our complacency and quicken our desire for a more fruitful life. Be patient, we pray, as we amend who we are in the hope of becoming who you intend us to be. We ask this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to Luke. The 13th chapter, verses 6 through 9. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, 
And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if it doesn't, you can cut it down. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy God, open us to know your will and to know how we can be producers of good fruit so that all may know the joy of being a child of God. Amen. Mary Oliver has a poem called The Summer Day, and it asks, what will we do? What will we be? This is her poem. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I have a clivia plant in my sunroom at home. Most house plants love this sunroom and they thrive there. And that room receives the best type of sun, bright but indirect. I have aloe plants, compliments of Carolyn Walters, poinsettias that are three years old and are now blooming bright red leaves. I have a couple of palms and bamboo and all of these are keeping that clivia company. The clivia has beautiful green leaves and it is at least six times larger since I got it 10 to 12 years ago. It looks healthy and strong, but it has one big problem. It doesn't like to bloom. When I got it, I was told that it would bloom every year, but in these 10 to 12 years, it has bloomed only twice, and the blooms were not nearly as big as I expected them to be, or as big as they look when you Google the plant. When I commented on Facebook that my clivio wouldn't bloom, a friend of mine who knows a lot about plants told me that the clivia needs to be dormant in the winter, so don't water it throughout the winter. Well, I haven't been brave enough to stop watering it for the winter. I was afraid that it would die. But this year, I decided I was going to try it. I really want this plant to bloom and to be beautiful. So it hasn't received a drop of water since November. I plan to start watering it and feeding it this week. It will be interesting to see if this plant will live up to its potential. This clivia is a perfectly nice looking plant as it is. It has rich green leaves and it has grown enormous over the years. It started at about the size of this new baby one that has sprouted within the pot. It could just continue as a nice house plant indefinitely, but that's not what this clivia was created to do. It isn't producing fruit. 
It isn't producing beautiful, fragrant flowers. The clivia is just getting by, being nice, when it could be extraordinary. The parable that Jesus tells about the fig tree is much like my clivia plant. The tree, the fig tree, isn't producing figs. It isn't fruitful. It's wasting the good soil it is planted in. It may look fine. It may be overall healthy and just existing, but it's not producing as it was intended to do by its creator. Its purpose is to produce figs. Right now, it's just existing. Like all parables, it has a message for us as followers of Jesus. The message is about being fruitful in the world as Christians. Are we just nice people going along in the world, or are we producing the fruit that God intends for our lives and for our church? We all want our lives to amount to something, to somehow make a difference in the world. But too often we allow ourselves to just go along being nice, meeting the expectations of the world rather than becoming what God intends for us to be and be fruitful Christians. We are called to bear fruit. Now maybe we don't really know what this means. What does it mean to be fruitful? What kind of fruit are we supposed to produce? Who is supposed to benefit from the fruit we produce? Our time of Lent is intended for us to spend some time in prayer and service, trying to discern how we become fruitful followers of Jesus. These six weeks of Lent before Easter are an annual designated time to evaluate and reflect upon our faith. It is a time to define and refine the spiritual disciplines which keep us spiritually healthy and fruitful. It is a time to quench our thirst and feed our spirits. What have we neglected in our relationship with God? During Lent, we usually try to be more intentional about devotion time with God. We seek to learn more about God and spend quiet time in prayer so we can listen to God's still, small voice. We open our spirits and our hearts to receive God's Holy Spirit into our lives and to guide the living of our days. How have we failed to be obedient to the mission that Jesus gave all of his followers? Jesus commanded his followers to love one another. He said, if you love me, love one another. How have we served others? Jesus reminded his disciples that he didn't come to be served, but to serve others. And that is our call as well. We see so many leaders today who use their position for their own privilege rather than to be responsible and care for those they lead. Leaders are servants, yet they often would rather be served. What have we done to make disciples for the transformation of the world? Jesus gave the great commandment to make disciples. If we shared the love of God with others, the world would be transformed. We don't have to hand out tracts or go door to door, but we are called to extend ourselves to others, to get to know them, and to offer an invitation to serve and worship. Lent gives us an opportunity to consider how we have been faithful and where we need to grow in faith and understanding of God's call on our lives. During Lent, we ask ourselves, how do we get back on track, if we were ever on track to begin with? As I've looked back on Monumental's previous study and work, I discovered that the congregation has spent time with Bishop Robert Schneezy's writing, Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. His work defines how congregations become fruitful and vital and how they become living communities of faith. Bishop Schneezy's five practices are the foundation of a faithful church, a growing church, 
a church making an impact in their community and in the world. As a reminder, the five practices that he lists are radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and extravagant generosity. We have long been familiar with these concepts, but it's the adjectives, the descriptive words that make an impact. It's not just hospitality, but radical hospitality, going beyond just being friendly, being radical, going over the top, extending ourselves beyond perhaps our comfort zone, and passionate worship, not just Sunday morning worship, but worship that is relevant and touches us deeply, and worship where we are participants, not just observers of what's happening. We put our, our own hearts into the prayers and into the music and into the scriptures. An intentional faith development is about becoming lifelong learners of what it means to be a faithful follower. Many Christians never get past their third grade Sunday school class understanding of God. If we want to be fruitful, we continue to learn and we continue to grow in faith and understanding through being intentional about learning about God. And then there's risk taking mission and service. God calls us to mission that may be beyond our comfort level, to be with people that we don't know or serve those who are not like us. Risk taking is about being like Jesus who healed the leper and the bleeding woman, who washed the disciples' feet, who talked to a Samaritan woman. Christians are risk takers for God. Extravagant generosity. This is giving that challenges us to let go of our fear of scarcity and embrace God's abundance for our lives. It's giving that is a tithe 10% of our income, and understanding that everything that we have is a gift from God, and in response, we give back to God. These practices produce the fruit that honors God. Faithful followers, those who serve others, and love as Christ has loved us. The fruit of our faith makes the lives of others better, brings peace to those in turmoil, joy to the brokenhearted, hope to the hopeless, and love to the lonely and lost. The fig tree was fed. We don't know if it became fruitful. My Clivia will receive water and food starting next week. It remains to be seen if it will be fruitful and bloom beautiful flowers. We have fed our spirits and our hearts during this season of Lent. When that glorious Easter day arrives, will we be filled with the hope, peace, joy, and love that will produce fruit for the world? Or will we just be nice and go about our ordinary lives? Or will we be extraordinary and blossom and bloom? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Amen. We begin our prayer time this morning again with uh, the song, I Choose Love. Let us sing together.
God, you are the one who forgives us. God, you are the one whose forgiveness leads us back into relationship with you and humans all around us. That is so hard for us to conceive of. Cutting us off would be so much easier for us to understand. And yet you offer that forgiveness to each of us. You ask us to repent, to turn to a new way and start down a new path with the grace we have received from you. Let us work to mend what forgiveness makes possible. May we stress not a desire to be proved right, but a desire to make right what still needs to be forgiven. We name before you what still needs to be forgiven in our own lives, in our relationships that are close to us, among the people of our city and state and country and between the countries of the world. As we pray for peace, let it be a peace with justice and mercy and of reconciliation. Let us pray for those too weary to work for justice, too weary to put one foot in front of the other, and too weary and vulnerable to bring anything to share except themselves. Let us pray that each of us will be the bringer of hope in this weary world, that we as the church might be the light of hope and point all toward the remembering of the resurrection of Christ and the promise of new life. And we offer ourselves to be used as you have planned. We pray as your disciples so long ago as they were taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. hymn this morning. Let's sing together. Fourth in thy name, number 438, if you have a hymnal.
may your spiritual thirst be quenched and your spirit fed and filled so that you may go out and produce spiritual fruits for the kingdom of God. Go in peace, and may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen.